In the Brawl Talk that Brawl Stars released yesterday, Brawl Stars officially revealed the six new hyperchargers that are going to be coming into the game. In this video, I'm going to explain, show, and break down every last little thing you need to know about each and every single one of these six new hyperchargers. Starting off with Brock's, which is called Rocket Barrage. Brock fires a rocket barrage, raining down rockets in the targeted area simultaneously in four waves. On top of that, Brock is also going to get about a quarter of a speed and damage buff while also getting a 5% increase in shield. So how long does the hypercharge take to charge? So it takes seven shots if you are also hitting every tick of the fires as well that Brock leaves per shot. But if you are not hitting them, it takes 12 full Brock shots without the fire to get that hypercharge. So the first thing I did when I saw this Brock hypercharge is I said, wow, this is going to destroy a safe, but that's actually not the case. The hypercharge super does 22% while a normal Brock super, if done correctly, does 21. So honestly, what I thought was going to be the main use for the Brock super, which is just absolutely terrorizing a safe, is actually a completely useless play. So I also did some testing on the big bot in the training cave, which I don't necessarily love to do because there's no big bots in Brawl Stars, really. And it is actually a lot more effective to use the hypercharge super on the bot than it would be a safe. So I got up to 10,500 damage per second with the hypercharge super, whereas with my normal super, I only got to 3,800. Additionally, the bot also lost two times the amount of damage when I use the hypercharge rather than the normal super. So I guess if there's like a big bot for whatever reason in one of your games, use the hypercharge super, you're going to get some value. I tried checking the area for it as well. And to be honest, you kind of cover the same area. I was able to kill three by three of the little robots in the back. So you also don't want to use it to cover more ground either, to be honest. For me, I think the most realistic way to use this Brock Hypercharge is to try and make sure you get one hit. So if someone is one shot or you have a large crowd of brawlers in one area, then yeah, use the Hypercharge. But to be honest, for safe damage, for just regular supers, I wouldn't really recommend using it. I think we're going to have to wait a little bit to see when Brock is in the game for how we want to use this Hypercharge. My guess is it's going to be a little bit useless. It's not going to give too much of a buff to Brock. And you're just going to want to use it to get some safe damage. So you get those buffed stats and buffed shots for your normal attacks. I'm going to rate this Hypercharge a 6 out of 10 because I don't think it helps Brock too much. Next up, we have Nita's Hyper Bearing. So for this, Nita hypercharges Bruce, making him increase in size giving him 15% movement speed buff and a 20% increased health buff. At the same time, Nita herself is going to get 26% speed buff, 25% damage buff, and a 5% shield buff. So there is a lot of buffs going down with this hypercharge. So to compare some stats, the base Bruce Bear has 8.6 thousand HP, does 800 damage, has regular movement speed, and heals for 1,040. The hypercharge Nita Bear has 10,320 HP, so a 1,720 HP buff, which is pretty big. It still does 800 damage. It still heals for 1,040, but you also get the increased movement speed. So when you have the Nita Bear and Nita on the map, you have almost 19,000 HP just between Nita and her bear. And then on top of that, you get 1,000 a heal, whether Bruce or you just hits a shot. So that is a ton of HP on the map, and I think that is very, very strong. To get the hypercharge, you need to hit 10 normal Nita shots, which is hard or not hard, depending on what you're facing. I think I'm really going to like Nita kind of as a tank counter and just overwhelming tanks. So if you see an Ash, a Sam, a Primo, something like that, I feel like going Nita would be a really good option. If you're facing brawlers that have range or throwers, such as like Bell or Barley, you probably want to avoid playing Nita because you're probably not going to get your hypercharge. Like I said, I would definitely use this Nita hypercharge kind of as an anti-tank and just playing Nita into tanks more often now, I think is a much more viable option. There are a lot of tanks that do really bad against spawnables. To be honest, there are a lot of brawlers that do really bad against spawnables. And I think this hypercharge Nita might just be too overwhelming for all of those brawlers. I'm going to give this hypercharge a 7.5 out of 10. So I do think it's definitely better than Brock's. I do think it's very good, but I don't think it's absolutely game changing. I think it's just a pretty big, decent size buff for Nita. Next up, we have my boy Jean's hyper hands. And honestly, I don't know exactly how to feel about this. So Jean's hypercharge is Jean's super now splits into three different hands, each being able to grab an enemy. First goes straight and the other go diagonally. Something to note about the hypercharge is it's always going to react the same. So it's always going to be the exact same length diagonally. It's never going to change. So make sure you get used to how you're using your pull. So Gene takes 12 full shots to get the hypercharge, which if you guys play Gene, you know that Gene getting a super is pretty difficult. 
in modes such as knockout or bounty where gene is played most often i really don't think you're going to even get one hypercharge a game i think the best place now to use gene is going to be gem because you have the highest likelihood of getting use out of the hypercharge but with that being said, there are some downsides. He fell off because he just doesn't do enough damage. He has single fire and just doesn't get enough supers throughout the game. Well, I think that's going to be an issue because the pull with hypercharge pulls way faster than normal. The brawlers get to you in like 0.5 seconds if you hit a max range pull compared to like 1.5. And honestly, if you hit more than one target, I mean, how are you going to kill them with Gene? You need to have really good synergy with your teammates if you want to use this hypercharge. Because if you're pulling a tank, if you're pulling two brawlers near you, there's just nothing you can do as a Gene to get that kill. So to conclude Gene, I don't really think the hypercharge actually changes that much when it comes to the gameplay of Gene. I don't think you're even going to get one hypercharge a game unless you hit both of your pulls that you get before the hypercharge and then you gain your super back off of that. Even if you get your hypercharge, I feel like a lot of the time it might even hurt you more than it's going to help. So I think Jean's might needs to be touched up a little bit. I do expect they're going to buff the hypercharge rate so you can get it more often, kind of similarly to what they did with Crow. But I'm going to rate Jean's for now a 4 out of 10 because I just don't think it's that good. So Max's hypercharge, unlimited energy, I think is insanity. Max throws an energy drink to each team member, increasing their movement speed and granting them 25% supercharge. So this is just absolutely insane. To give you guys a little bit of stats, Max takes 8.75 full shots for her to gain her hypercharge or 27 total bullets. You are faster with the hypercharge max super than you are with just a regular speed, but I also think that's just because you have the max speed stacking on top of the hypercharge speed buff speed. What I like about this max hypercharge is you can be basically anywhere on the map and you are going to throw your teammates an energy drink, which gives them speed and 25% supercharge. Speed is one of the most important things in the game. And the downside to max kind of, even though it's not really a downside, is you have to be right beside your teammates when you get your speed. The reason this is a downside is because you're all grouped up, so the enemies can kind of shoot their shots in a similar area, and that can block you out. But the fact that with this hypercharge that you can be basically anywhere on the map and you're just throwing your teammates these speed buffs is absolutely insane, because you can come from all different directions and be super fast, and it's just going to be unstoppable. On top of that, it gives your brawler 25% of their super just for picking up the energy drink. So if they're one or two shots to super, well, you're gonna have your super now. And to have the speed, to have max hypercharging with speed, and to have your super, it's going to be unstoppable. I would use this in game just like I would any other max speed. It's just a better version of a max speed. So I'm gonna rate this a 10 out of 10. This is insane. This would probably be the hypercharge that I would buy along with one other that I'm yet to talk about. But Max's hypercharge is going to be insane. Expect Max to go right to the top of the meta. Next up, we have Sandy's Swift Winds. So Sandy grants himself and his allies 20% increased movement speed while inside the Sandstorm. His super will also silence enemies for 0.5 seconds when it lands, so you also can't be shot at for 0.5 seconds, basically. So any brawler that has a charged up shot, we could take Angelo, for example. If it's getting charged up and you drop the Sandy super where an Angelo is, that Angelo is going to lose that shot and it's going to be reset back to zero. So that's going to completely nerf that brawler and that's a very big interaction change. Additionally, like I said with Max, speed is king. Speed is the strongest attribute that you can have in Brawl Stars. And the fact that you get a movement speed while you're also in a sandstorm, aka invisible, is absolutely game breaking now before i talk about how good sandy's going to become let's talk about a couple stats the movement difference like i said is crazy it takes 10 total sandy shots to get a hypercharge and i believe it's six right now to get a regular super so if you can just get that regular super throw it down and then get a couple shots you're basically going to get your hypercharge right away before sandy used to be not weak but kind of just mid into tanks I think with this hypercharge, Sandy is going to be incredibly strong into tanks because you can see yourself getting at least two hypercharges a game. 20 shots is not that much in the tanks, especially when you're cycling sandstorms. And when you have that speed buff, it's going to be super easy to get shots while staying alive. Additionally, because of the damage buff you get from a hypercharge, it takes Sandy's regular shot from 1800 to 2250, which is a crazy buff. So the fact that you are invisible, the fact that you get a 20% movement speed buff in the Sandy Super, the fact that the other opponents get muted 
And then the fact that you also get this damage buff is just insane. Like, I'm telling you, this is broken, and I don't even know what to say about it. I can already see max Sandy comps just being absolutely unbeatable in this next meta. And I would use the Sandy Super just like I use any other Sandy Super. Connect Grass use it to identify opponents, use it to go invisible and move up. It's super good and there is no wrong way of using it. I'm going to give Sandy's Hypercharge a 10 out of 10. If you can only get one Hypercharge, pick between Max and Sandy's because those are easily the two best. Last but not least, we have Tick's Headstrong. Tick quickly deploys his head, charging enemies faster and leaving behind six mini mines on explosion. So to explain that, the six mines are kind of like the Tick Gadget Mine Mania where you just throw six, you know, mines instead of three. It's basically the same thing once your tick head explodes. Additionally, the difference of speed that the tick head has with hypercharge and not is actually a really big difference. And I actually think this can help tick a lot. So just for some general stats, there isn't really too much to cover here. It takes 23 mines to get a hypercharge, which is to be honest, a lot of mines, but you are basically hitting one tick mine a shot guaranteed at least. So it's not going to take too long. And to be honest, that's really all I have to say outside of the tick head moves faster and you drop it faster. I would use the head and I would pick tick the exact same way I would before the hypercharge. But I do think this actually makes a pretty strong difference to tick. I think this does buff my boy quite a bit. Tick kind of fell off in the meta. It used to be easily the best thrower, but then Larry came around and then it felt like other brawlers just had too much HP and too much damage to deal with Tick. I'm pretty interested to see if Tick kind of goes back to his old form now where he's kind of strong against run it down stuff and can hold his own against basically everything. I'm going to rate this a 7.5 and put it equal with the Nita because I think both Nita and Tick's hypercharges help out the brawler a good amount, but doesn't shoot them up the meta. It just makes them a little bit stronger.